I've been working in life sciences in different areas for most of my career. Started off in healthcare and technology banking for two middle market firms in New York, and then I moved into portfolio management where I was a partner in an asset management firm specializing in biotech and tech investments there. And then I moved into uh, executive operational management where I ran a global oncology company and we were conducting clinical trials on three different continents, Europe, South America, and uh, the United States. Well, uh, before this became part of our vernacular now, a lot of people are talking about psychedelics. They're being talked about throughout the news. Um, there's a big rage about microdosing. Before this movement occurred, I was inspired by a book written by a neuroscientist up in Los Angeles, uh, Sam Harris. He wrote a book about his psychedelic experiences through his youth being a student at Berkeley and thereafter. And it just really intrigued me that there could be um, a business opportunity here. So I started looking around for transactions in 2018, 2019. There was very little bit out there. I mean, I didn't think anything what I saw was investable. Up until the end of 2019, uh, a team at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, got published in Journal Metabolic Engineering for uh, what was a research first. They had figured out a way to take a recombinant uh, prokaryotic host and convert it into psilocybin and its side products very efficiently. So the basis of our company, we have a platform technology based on metabolic engineering that could convert genetically modified bacteria into our drug targets. So the initial discovery was biosynthetic psilocybin and some of the other alkaloids in, the, uh, in that fungus, but we built up a portfolio of over 100 molecules right now. And the value proposition is that growing drugs and bacteria is a far superior method as far as cost and efficiency to any of the competitive. Nobody actually owns the molecule psilocybin. This exists in nature. It's existed in nature for thousands upon thousands of years. So companies moving into the space are relying on certain manufacturing procedures or uh, production methods in order to acquire the drug. It's very, very difficult to get. It's very, very expensive in the research market, even if you can get it. So our, our value there is that we're developing our, what we look at as our own drug portfolio. Many of the companies in the space, I would say almost all of them, except for the 800-pound uh, Gorilla Compass Pathways, is relying on some third party to deliver them drugs. And I don't see many uh, commercial studies out there. There's very few. Most of the uh, areas are in academic um, research, and we're going into uh, commercial studies with our biosynthetic psilocybin. We have so much more data on this than many of the drugs that have been through the process of attempting to get approved by uh, healthcare regulatory bodies. These molecules in plants and fungi have been ingested for thousands upon thousands of years. So we know a lot. And a lot of this had to do with spiritual purposes and healing purposes. Then in, in the 1940s, Dr. Albert Hoffman synthesized psilocybin from the magic mushroom and LSD, and they tested these on thousands upon thousands of patients for similar indications that we're going after today, substance abuse, anxiety, depression, PTSD, and the results were incontrovertible back in the 50s and 60s. We saw healing powers of these plants. Fast forward, they were turned off in 1970 by the Nixon administration under Controlled Substances Act because they made it into the recreational market and they, they, were, they were just everywhere. So the government decided to put a, uh, you know, a ceiling on this and research didn't stop, but it, it, it certainly was um, slowed up over the next uh, 30 years or so. Then in 2000, Johns Hopkins was the uh, first uh, academic center to get approval from the FDA to put psilocybin into human beings and start the research again. Here we are just over 20 years later, where now all of a sudden there are multiple companies coming into the space and you know participating. And there are many, many different types of psychedelics and they all have very different characteristics. Sure, well, ketamine was actually uh, approved before Johnson Johnson's uh, Spravada. That was just a new formulation of it. Um, so it's been around for about 50 years and ketamine does, definitely has some positive impact against some of these uh, maladies that we're discussing. Um, Right now, the industry is looking for its footing to move this forward. There's, there's discussions out there about states and decriminalization, but we feel the pathway is putting these drugs through the FDA and having the DEA eventually reschedule them when they demonstrate statistical efficacy within the clinic. And that's what we're doing. I say there's going to be three companies in the you know, public, the companies I know about in the next few years that get a sort of drug approved, and we plan on being one of those. So our next milestone is filing an investigational new drug application with the FDA this year and initiating clinical trials on biosynthetic right. psilocybin and then bringing up additional molecules from our portfolio into the clinic as well. I think there's, you know, depending on your time horizon, there's unlimited upside here. So 
we are very, very different than the cannabis market, except for one area where we look almost identical, and that's the capital markets. And a lot of cannabis uh, investors got into our uh, industry very early and stocks rose, you know, appreciated very, very rapidly and they came back down. So our entire industry right now is under the biotech heading and biotech has not done well over the last year. It's starting to go up again. Out most of the stocks in our uh, industry are down about 75%. We're actually the best performing stock of all the public companies for the last one month and six months. That's right. That's exciting. And depression has been an epidemic for a long time before even COVID. And these drugs, we believe, indisputably, positively impact these uh, maladies that we've been discussing.